Can you guys, you guys hear me? Choice. 
And you can choose to be whoever you want, and you can choose to be as good as you want. And the choice is up to you. Okay? And that's a very, very important thing. Choice is not just about good and bad. You get to choose everything. You get to choose who you want to be. You're going to get to choose what you do with your life. Okay? You get to choose if you want to be a wrestler. You get to choose how hard you're going to work. You get to choose whether you're an A, B, or a C student. You get to choose if you're going to work. You get to choose what music you listen to. You get to choose what clothes you wear. You get to choose how hard you work when you go to wrestling practice. Okay? You get the idea? Choice is a huge thing. It is an unbelievable gift that has been given you. And it's critical that you understand that the choices that you make will take you different places. Okay? Everybody would like to be on the kind of the interstate of life. Okay? The fast lane. Wouldn't everybody like to be on that? Huh? But if you're in San Diego, right, and you get on I-5, you go to the state of Washington. If you get on and choose I-10, you go to Florida. Is there a difference between Florida and Washington? Yes, there is. So it is with the choices that you make in your life. Okay? All these choices that every day that people talk to you about, not good or bad, but the choices you, you make will affect your life. But the beauty of it is, the beauty of it all is, okay, you get to what? You get to choose. See? The big C word that I said. You get to choose. And most of the things that happen in your life will be because of the choices that you make. Not the choices that your mother and father make, okay, but the choices that you make, okay? So it becomes very critical for you to make good choices. It becomes very critical, all right, for you to pay attention to what you want to do and where you want to go. And more importantly, who you want to be. Who do you want to be, okay? You get to choose who you want to be. You get to choose whether you're going to be an egotistical, smart mouth jerk, or you get to choose if you're going to be a loving, caring, okay, wonderful person. You get to choose by the choices you make every day and the actions you take. So choice is a huge thing. You get to choose how good a wrestler you want to be. You get to choose. Okay? And I'll tell you some things that you have to do if you want to be good. And the thing that you need to understand is, I'm going to tell you what to do. Then the what is up to you. What's up to you then? The choice is up to you. Okay? It's up to you. It's not up to me. There's a lot of sayings in, the, in, the, in, in life. Um, you've probably heard a lot of them like, um, if you know, you can eat a horse of water, but you can't make a drink. Okay? Okay? If you want to know how to get to the top of the mountain, ask the guy that goes there every day. So if you want to be successful, who should you ask? Like successful you should ask somebody that's successful. And he'll probably be very happy to share with you what you have to do to get there. Okay? But usually it takes a tremendous amount of work. <laughs> See, everybody wants to be good. And everybody wants to be great. But not everybody wants to work unbelievably hard. When I went away to school, my parents told me okay, that I could be in the top 10% of everything I did the rest of my life if I developed a work ethic, if I worked harder or longer than everyone else. And I found that to be true. I found that no matter what I did, whether I was a, whether I was a wrestler, whether I was a coach, whether I was a soldier, whether I was a businessman, I've been in the top 1% of everything that I've done, and I am no different than you are. I had the same skills that you have right now. But the one thing that I did learn, and that I've applied in my entire life, is work. Is that I will stay when you leave. And sooner or later, I will catch you. And in an amount of time, I will pass you. Okay? Everybody's heard the story, <clears throat> story of the turtle in the hare, turtle in the rabbit. Okay, which one was the fastest? Obviously the rabbit, and he messes around and who wins the race? The turtle. 
The turtle because he's slow and he's consistent and he keeps going in the same direction. Okay. So you can be successful. You can be super successful no matter who you are, if you want to be. You can be in the top 10% of everything you do the rest of your life, if you're willing to work. Most people I've found don't choose to work. We're back to the big C word, right? What is it? Choice. Okay? You get to decide. You go all go to school right now. You get to decide if you're going to be an A student, a B student, a C or a D student. Now people don't like it when I talk to them like this because it throws all the responsibility on who? On you guys. See? Don't tell me that you want to be great as a wrestler and you don't run every morning. Don't tell me that you want to be great as a wrestler if you don't go into the weight room. Don't tell me that you want to be a great wrestler if you don't go in the, room, in the wrestling room two or three times during the year in the off season to get better. You want to be good, but you're not willing to pay the price. And there's a price to be paid for everything in life. There's a price to be paid. You have to pay the price. Okay? And you have to choose. It always goes back to this word. Choice is such a huge deal. You get to choose whether you want, right, to be who you want to be. But you have to pay the price. You have to go out and you have to do things that most people won't do things. Most <clears throat> do many of your peers want to get out and go run at 5.30 in the morning? No. Do they want to go when everybody else is going to the weight? Do they want to go into the weight room and lift weights? No, they don't. See? And so you have to decide and you have to choose if that's what you want, okay, in order to get to where you want to go. So a lot of things right, end up coming down to you and you alone. But I promise you this, and I tell kids at the intensive camp all the time, that you can be in the top 10%. And when they come to the intensive camp, one of the things that we try to teach them, right, is a work ethic. You have a definition of work, and I have a definition of work, and our definitions, guys, are worlds apart. You're over here somewhere, and I'm over here somewhere, okay? Now, when I say that, I don't say that in the, in the context that I'm any better than you, right? As I work hard, so I'm here and you work great here. One of the things that happens in life in order to make people feel good, they make, try to make other feel, people feel worse. So if I work harder, I'm better, you don't work as hard, all right, you're not as good. And that's in essence what one of the big things in high school is right now is what? Bullying, right? In order for bullies to feel good, they gotta make the other people feel bad. But if you want to be good at something, guys, the way that you do that is you have to be, everybody wants to be special. Everybody want to be special? Everybody's on the same wavelength here. They, in my work ethic, we're all on the same here. You guys are over here, and I'm over here. I'm not any better, I'm not any worse. I am just different, see? And that difference allows me to do certain things that you don't do. Because I have developed skills, certain skills, right? Do hard work, right? Hold on. You three guys in the back that are talking, got the glasses, big guy right there, he's looking around. Hey, go back there and do our push ups. You, all three of you. Go ahead. Go on. If you're not going to pay attention, you might as well become strong. Okay? Makes sense? Okay? There's another thing that we can talk about. There's a thing, guys, that's simple is if you were standing up in front of people, would you want people talking? Huh? There's a thing called respect. Okay? And you give respect to people of what you want back. So, okay? Going back to where I was, so. The thing is, every one of you want to be special, you want to be different. And you can do that by having a work ethic that other people don't have. But you have to learn it, and you have to work at it. Okay? We have found seven skills, seven skills that I think are very important for young people to learn. 
If you learn these skills, you can pretty much do anything you want in life. And over the course of all my years of doing an intensive camp, right? I've done an intensive camp for 40 years. You hear intensive camps all over the country. Penn State has one, Iowa has one, Iowa State, everybody has an intensive camp. There's three days, there's five days, there's ten days, there's all kinds of intensive camps. Okay? But what an intensive camp is, is it, it's completely different. They're all of them are tied into the one I started 28 years ago. But the point being is you can be anybody who you want to be. Okay? You can be anybody that you want to be. And the seven skills that we have identified are these. Anybody, right, when you're looking at them, look at it from the idea of a pyramid. And at the bottom of the pyramid, there's always a foundation. It's just like in the house. So what is the foundation that everything is put on? And it's, the bottom one is discipline. Discipline holds up everything else, and there's only one kind of discipline, and that's self-discipline. What you do, right? If other people are making you do it, that's not discipline. Discipline is doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it. Okay? To be studying, to be lifting weights, to be running, okay? being a job, but discipline is the bottom of everything. Discipline, dedication, deciding what you do, and dedicating your life to do that. Discipline, dedication, sacrifice. If you want to be great, if you want to be good, you are going to have to give up something. You're going to have to give up TV time, you're going to have to give up time on your phone, you're going to have to give up time on the PlayStation, you might have to give up time with your, your buddies or your girlfriend, right? You're going to have to sacrifice some things. You're going to have to learn what hard work is. Okay? Not what you think hard work is. Okay? But you're going to have to redefine hard work. You have to become responsible. You're responsible for the decisions you make, and then you will help be held accountable. So if you don't get there, if you don't get to the state tournament, if you don't get to where you want to be, if you don't get an A, who's responsible? Yourself. You're accountable to yourself. And the last one, six of the skills that we have identified, and my wife named them a long time ago, 10 or 12 years ago. She calls them the J7, right? The seventh skill, right, six of the skills are about you. They're all about you and who you want to become. The seventh skill is service, okay? I look at wrestlers different. Wrestlers are warriors. They're different than other sports because it's a one-on-one -on -one deal. You walk out in that circle, and your job is to inflict your will upon someone else. To beat them up as bad as possible within the rules. Okay? That's what old time gladiators did. Now it's good that we don't have this and this. Okay? If you know what that means. Right? But that's what wrestlers are. You're warriors. Okay? You walk into an arena, you walk out there and it's you against the other guy and your job is to beat him up and inflict your will upon him. That's what your job is. Okay? And that's part of what a warrior does. The other part of what a warrior does, those six skills, is service, is to take care of the less fortunate. Okay? The people that are being picked on. It's your job to take care of those people. It's your job to, when you go back to school and somebody's picking on someone, to have enough inner courage, whether it's your buddies, to say, way off. Okay? That's what a leader is. That is what a warrior is. Right? A warrior fights for other people. That's who you are by the very nature of your sport. Okay? You're not like other sports. Say, this is not a game. Anybody ever talk about play wrestling? Huh? There's no play in this. Say, you go out there to do that. Say, it's not a game. It's a different deal. That's why it's very, very hard for most people. You ever try to talk to your buddies to come out for wrestling? Yeah. Well, some don't want anything to do with it, do they? You know why? My father, <clears throat> my father used to say all the time, is always ask why. The reason that most people don't do what you do, the simple fact that it is, it's too hard. 
it's incredibly hard. Playing football, playing basketball, you swim, okay, do all the other sports, but you never get as tired as you do, okay, as a wrestler. It's amazing how tired you get, isn't it? And the other thing that you know it's hard about wrestling that makes it super unique, okay, which makes you tough, helps you become mentally tough and physically tough. You know what the other thing is? You cut weight. Anybody enjoy cutting weight? Pretty much sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> huh? Think about this. Think about what you do, what you consider fun. You go and you put sweats on and you sweat your butt off. You take all this excessive weight off of you and you feel like what? You feel like crap. And then you have to go in that circle and do what? You have to go in that circle and do your very, very best. It is the best thing in the world, guys, to get you ready for life. Because that's what life is. Okay? There will be a lot of times in your life that you will feel like crap. See? There will things that will happen in your life that you won't like. And you'll feel like crap. But you're going to still have to go to work. You're still going to have to come back to your family. You're still going to have to produce even though you don't feel like it. And the sport that you're in right now will help you immensely in that. It will give you a huge edge in life. Okay? That's what wrestling can do for you. So these six skills, discipline, dedication, sacrifice, hard work, responsibility, and accountability, are all about you. Who you want to be. And they're skills. You're not born with them. Nobody's born with any one of those skills. They're all learned. And the more you work at them, and the better you get at them, the more things that you will get out of life. Whether it be in education, whether it be in your job, whether it be in wrestling, whether it be in your relationships, those seven skills will help you in anything that you do the rest of your life. Okay? And because you're a wrestler, you can apply those things in a different framework than everybody else. Okay? So it becomes very important for you to understand what we're getting from this sport. That when you walk in that wrestling room every day, you're getting something that most kids in America today are not getting. Okay? You're learning how to work incredibly hard. And then you have to, when you don't feel good, you have to wrestle to the best of your ability. Think that's hard? Get some big football players and make them cut 15 or 20 pounds and then make them play football game. See how they like it. Cut away hard, guys? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. See, one of the things that and, and people will call me old school. One of the things that people say is we want to make it easier on kids today. I don't want to make it easier on you. I want to make it tougher on you. Because the tougher I am on you now, the better you will be for the rest of your life. I don't want to take the things away from wrestling that make wrestling unique and very difficult. It's not for everybody. It's not a game. It's incredibly hard. But the lessons that you learn will stay with you forever and will give you a huge advantage the rest of your life. Okay? When I went to Ranger School, the United States Army, Ranger School, to give you an idea, is 61 days long. It's an average of 19 hours a day. There's a lot of days you don't even get any sleep. In the last phase, last phase in Florida, I had five days I got no sleep. But every day, you're probably humping anywhere from 10 to 15 miles, and you're in swamps, and you're dirty, and you're sweating, and you're miserable, right? A lot of days you don't get any sleep. But you know what they teach you? You know what they do? They take lack of food, lack of sleep, sleep, extreme dehydration, okay? And they try and break you. That's what they want to do now. Lack of sleep, okay? Lack of food and extreme dehydration. What does that sound like? Isn't that, doesn't that sound a lot like wrestling? Yeah. And that's what it is. So when I went to ranger school, as hard as it was, I already had a huge advantage over everybody else. It gave me something okay, that helped me way beyond everybody else, and I ended up an honor graduate when I, when I left after 
to 61 days. That is what you are learning to do. Okay? And that becomes a very important lesson, lesson for you guys to understand. That what this sport can give you is not just in high school. It's not about wins and losses. It goes way beyond that. Because it's going to teach you how to deal with adversity. And life is tough, and life is difficult. It's hard, today. And in society today, the biggest mistake I see society making it today, they're trying to make everything easy for you. I'm just the opposite. I would make things difficult for you. And the more difficult and the more adversity that I can throw at you now, well, means that the rest of your life will be easier. Today. You're going to have to learn to deal with stress and pressure. Pressure is a privilege. Today, if you think about it, pressure is a privilege. I have found in my life that the majority of people can't function when pressure comes upon them. They fall apart. And they fall apart because they're not used to it. Today. And there will be pressure situations the rest of your life that you're going to have to deal with. Okay. I'll give you a couple of examples that will happen. Okay. And they're not the most positive things in the world. A lot of times when pressure or stress comes, they're not positive. But it doesn't mean that you can just disregard them. No, you have to learn to what? You have to learn to deal with them. See, the number one thing, the number one stress inhibitor in anyone's life is a loss of a loved one. Okay? Mother, father, brother, grandfather, okay? The loss of a loved one. That's the number one stress to do thing in life. Now, if I took this group right here, and you guys just slid over here a little bit, just make a, just make a straight gap right down here. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Just to get to the point, right? Number one stress thing you're going to have to deal with is what? Loss of what? Love one. Love one. Second thing you're going to have to deal with, everybody on this side, you guys are going to get divorced. And you're going to have the second most stressful thing in life is divorce. Okay? And you guys are going to have to deal with it. Okay? And I use this as an example is that anybody want to get divorced? No. Did I want to get divorced? Sure they didn't. But I'll tell you what, there was a lot of stress involved in it. Okay? And what I learned through wrestling and what I learned through ranger school, those things helped me through that situation. So as you go here and you come to camp, and you're here in these matches, these are going to help you in situations later on in your life. Don't look for the easy way out. Look for the hard way. Okay? That's the thing you want to do, is see if you can learn to function under pressure. One of the things that, that they teach you, the number one thing that they teach you in ranger school is, is to function under pressure. No matter how miserable the situation is, you can function. And in wrestling, guys, one of the things we talk about all the time, right, is fatigue. How many times people have heard the saying, something like this. The guy is a machine, he doesn't get tired. You ever heard that? You ever seen a guy like that? Well, I'm telling you right now, that's not true. It's not a true statement. Say, when people say the guy is a machine, he doesn't get tired, that's not true. It's not a true statement. Okay? What it is, guys, is everybody gets tired. Everybody gets tired. The key in life, the key in ranger school, the key in wrestling, is to be able to function when you're tired. You ever had a match when the score is one to one, two to two, and you were about ready to quit, and you felt the other guy quit? You ever been there? What did they do to your energy level? Did it just shoot up? So you weren't really that tired. You just thought you were tired. So the thing that you want to do in wrestling that will help you in life is you want to learn to push yourself. See, what part of practice is the most important? The most important part of practice 
is the last five minutes. Why? Because that's the point you want to what? That's when you want to quit. That's when you want to stop. That's when you want to slow down. That's when you practice to push yourself, to learn to function when you're tired. The difference between me and I'm 70 years old, and the difference between all of you, is that I can function when I'm tired. Okay? If we went out and started hiking and go forever and ever and ever and stayed up all night for four or five then, nights, I would venture to bet the majority of you would stop before I did. Because I know that I can function when I'm tired. It gives you a huge advantage, guys, in wrestling, and it gives you a huge advantage in life. But you have to practice it. You have to practice. Okay? When practice is over, everybody else walks out of the room, what do you got to do? You got to stay. You got to do something extra. And you got to make it a habit. Say, always find the hardest way to do something. Okay? If it was easy, everybody would do it. And it is. There's no problem finding people to play games. Okay? Because it doesn't require any effort. Okay? It's easy for people to get in and to play. Okay? But wrestling's not play. It's hard and it's demanding. Okay? So what you have to learn to do is you have to learn to function when you're tired. If I could tell you one thing that would make a huge, two things that would make a huge difference in your life, one is you can outwork 90% of all Americans. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the world, you just have to be willing to invest more time and effort than anybody else. Okay? The second is to learn how to function when you're tired. If you can function when you're tired, you have a huge advantage over everybody else. <clears throat> but if you're going to outwork people, Another thing you have to learn, look at is, life isn't fair. And what I mean by that, it, the, price to, the price to give the same title, as an example, is the same for everybody. I'll use the example of buying a Cadillac. Right? The price to buy a Cadillac is $60,000. Right? We can all buy a Cadillac. We can all buy it. The price for all of us is the same, it's $60,000. But here lies the difference. I have some skills that you don't have, right? So, <clears throat> within those skills, I get paid $1,000 a day, you guys get paid $10 a day, you're gonna have to work 6,000 hours if you want. I only have to work 60 to get what I want. Same price, everybody understand? But we all have different skills. Guys in athletics, more explosive, better balanced, they have things to be known. Some people learn better, some people are stronger, some people are, are more flexible. Everything has changed, but the price is the same. You have to decide if you're willing to pay the price. See? And that goes back to what? You get to what? You get to choose. How do you want to be? Another thing that you need to do is develop your own philosophy. Okay? And what I mean by a philosophy is a philosophy is what you live by. What is, who you live by? What determines the decision that you will make in your life? I would venture to that if I asked, well, I know if I asked all of you guys, you wouldn't know. I would venture to do that if I asked the majority of the parents in here, they wouldn't have it written out on a piece of paper. Before you can start doing things in your life, you have to decide who you want to be. And at a young age, even at an old age, when I go to workshops, I make older people okay, decide what their philosophy wants to be. And your philosophy is what's going to guide you. The words that you pick, the words that you choose, are going to determine the way that you make your what? Make your choices. See? The beauty thing about it is, about your philosophy is, you can be whoever you want to be. You can be the greatest guy in the world, funny, laughing, loving, or 
you can be self-absorbed, egotistical jerk. It can all depend upon what? Choices that you make. See? So it becomes important for you guys to understand that. That you get to choose where you want to go. You get to choose what you want to do. And those things are very, very important. So as you go through life, okay, you need this philosophy. The next thing you need once you decide who you want to be, and I'll give you this right now for those who want to do it. Okay? Do this. Okay? This will just help you. Okay? I make everybody in the intensive, everybody in the intensive camp has to do this. They have to develop their own philosophy. This is the way you do it. Okay? This is the way you make your own philosophy. Right? Anybody ever said anything about you that hurt your feelings? No? Hasn't that happened to all of us? It's happened to all of us. Okay? So there are things that we do that people comment on. So this is how you develop your philosophy. How you choose to develop your philosophy. Next Saturday, I know for a fact that you will die. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Ghost, anybody seen the movie Ghost? Patrick Swayze? I bet a lot of the old people have seen it. Right. Yeah, young kids, they haven't seen it. But basically, Patrick Swayze is out with his girlfriend, Penny Moore. They, he gets, they get mugged, he gets killed. But he doesn't go anywhere. He doesn't go to heaven, doesn't go to hell, he just stays right here, except nobody can see him. Nobody can see him, and he can see and hear what everybody says. So that's the context of what we're going to have when you get killed next Saturday. You're going to go to your own funeral. Everybody's going to be there. Your mother, your father, brothers, sisters, friends, teachers, coaches. Everybody's going to be there. What are the seven things? Seven things that you would want them to say about who you were. You pick them. I'm not going to tell you who to be. I am not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm telling you, you get to choose who you want to be. So I want you, if you can do this, remember this, when you go back to the door, write down the seven words that you would want all those people to say about you. Okay? Hardworking, loyal, loving, thoughtful, right? Hardworking, trustworthy. What words would you want them to say about you? And then when you pick those seven words, then you live your life by those words. Okay, the beauty of it is this. I'm not telling you who to be. You get to pick who you want to be. I'm only going to hold you accountable for what you pick. See? And that becomes very important in your life. Is that who you want to be? Now you have seven, seven words to live your life by. Do you know why we pick seven? Anybody have any idea why we pick seven and not six and not five? What? Seven days a week. Seven what? Seven days in a week. Seven days in a week. Alright, that's close. Okay? What it is actually is psychologists tell us seven is the number of things that we can remember. Seven days in a week. How many continents? Seven. How many seas? How many deadly sins? How many wonders of the world? And the most important of all, guys, how many dwarfs? <laughs> There's seven. Okay. Just in case you want So what you do is you pick your seven words. Pick your seven words who you want to be, and then stick them up somewhere so you can see them. Why do you want them up so you can see them? So that they can remind you every day that this is the person that you have chosen to be. If they're not up to where you can see them, most people won't forget them. They need to be a reminder. Are reminders important? You think reminders are important? There's a guy in the year 2000, his name was Kimball Cross. Kimball Cross was an NCAA champion from Oklahoma State, and he was also an Olympic champion. I brought him in to talk to our team in the fall of, fall of 2000. And Kendall said this when he was training for the Olympic team. He said he made a sign, 
And the sign said, get up and train while your opponent is sleeping. And he took that sign and he put it on his ceiling right over his bed. He said it was the first thing he saw every morning when he got up. And it reminded him what he had to do for that day. And he also said it was the last thing he saw before he went to bed at night to remind him, did I do what I was supposed to do? So get your seven words and put them up. I took what Kendall said. I thought it was a great thing to do. And I took a little blue post-it note about this bit. And I wrote on it, three and zero, 10, and NCAA. And I put it in my daytime. Okay? And a daytime is a book for you that you don't know that older people keep what they do every day, right? So you flip from day to day, you use your day daytime to remind you of appointments and stuff you have. So I put it in my daytime, and every day when I move to the next day, I move the sweat to the next day. So it reminded me what it was that I needed to do, that I wanted to do. The three meant that we would be the University of Iowa in the dual meet, in the Big Ten, and the National Tournament. The ten meant the only way that we could win the National Tournament, they had four number one guys, was to have an All-American in every way. It had never been done before. And NCAA meant we would be the NCAA champions. Every day I went to that post it note and it reminded me what I needed to do that day, and it held me accountable. At night, I had to ask myself, did I do what I was supposed to have done? Okay? So it becomes very important for you to take your philosophy, your seven words, and put them up somewhere. These are words for you. These aren't words. You don't have to share with mother and father or anybody else. These are to help you remind yourself of who you want to be. And those things will help you become a better wrestler because they will keep you focused on our time. The next thing you need to do is you need to get some goals. And goals are, goals are a very interesting thing, guys, is that everybody talks about goals. Everybody talks to you about goals, right? And most of the times you hear about goals from the standpoint of academics and athletics. The goals go way beyond that, see? If I was to buy everybody a ship or a boat, anybody here might be able to buy a boat? Anybody? Buy any kind of boat you want? I'll buy any kind of boat you want. And the boat comes with everything. You can have whatever you want put on it. But the only thing the boat doesn't have is a rudder. What does a rudder do? A rudder steers the ship. It allows the boat to go wherever you want to in the river. What happens when you don't have a rudder? You go wherever the river takes you. If it takes you to the rocks, you go to the rocks. If it takes you to the sandbar, you go to the sandbar. Right? You have no course. You have no direction. Goals are like the rudder of a ship. They direct where you go. They allow you to decide what you want to do with your life. So you need to get a bunch of goals written down on a piece of paper, and you need to stick it up in your room to remind you what you want to do. <clears throat> there's a lot of ways, there's a lot of books, there's a lot of ways to do it, but I would suggest you get a piece of paper and you write 50 things you want to do in the next 10 years. Stick it up in your wall and look at it, and remind you what you want to do, because they will give you direction. And it's very, very important. And goals, guys, aren't just limited to athletics and school. Goals are in every part of your life. I have all kinds of goals. I have athletic goals. You can have athletic goals. You can be a state champion. Right? You can have adventure goals. What would you like to do adventure-wise in your life? Would you like to jump out of planes? Would you like to fly a plane? Would you like to climb the highest mountain in the continental United States? Would you like to drive a drag strip? Okay? What would you like to do adventure-wise in your life? Okay? Travel. You 
can have travel bans. I'm amazed that the majority of people in the United States haven't even seen what the United States has to offer. They haven't seen the Grand Canyon, the Carlsbad Cabins, headwaters of the Mississippi, right? They haven't seen Mount McKinley. They haven't seen Little Little Bighorn, right? They haven't seen the Florida Keys. So you can have travel bans. You can have adventure goals, travel goals. Even at your age, you can have money goals. How much money would you like to save? How much money would you like to make? What do you want to do as far as money the rest of your life? You can have professional goals. What do you want to do with your life? Okay? You want to be a doctor? You want to be a lawyer? You want to be a coach? Right? You want to work in a metal shop? What do you want to do professionally? Here? You can have family goals. What would you like to do with your family? Would you like to go on a vacation? Would you like to do things? Rather be closer with your brother, your sister, your mother, and father. You can have relationship goals, right? You got a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, right? You can have relationship goals. Mother, father, you can work on those, having a better relationship, right? So goals aren't just limited to academics and athletics. That's what people think. There's all kinds of things that you want to do, okay? And the reason I tell you that you need to write these goals down, guys, because at some time, way faster than you think. You're going to be just like me. I'm 70 years old. Okay? And you're going to look back on your life and you're going to have to answer one big question. Okay? Did I have an enjoyable life? Did I make do with my life? Did I see the Taj Mahal? Did I jump out of planes? Can I fly a plane? Can I scoot that? Right? Can I chase walk horses? You have to decide what you want to do with your life. Or, I sat in my room all day on, on PlayStation and watched TV and looked at my phone. Guys, you get to choose what you do with your life. I'm 70 years old. I have jumped out of planes. I have climbed in the highest mountain in the United States. I can fly a plane. Right? I have done <coughs> drag racing. I have chased wild horses. I've been to war doesn't make me any better than anybody else. But the thing that I want, guys, with my life is I want to experience a lot of different things. And there is a lot of fun things to experience. And that's why you got to get out and see what you want to do with it. Because you only get to go through life once. You don't, like to, you don't get to screw it up and get to be my age and say, okay, I don't get to push the reset button and go do over takes me back to when I'm 20 years old, I don't get the second chance. So it becomes important to think, what do you want to do with it? Because remember, you're going to get about 90% of whatever you want to do if you work at it. I'll guarantee you that. Okay? But you've got to work at it. You've got to work at it hard. Because in the end, you're going to have to look back on your life and say, you know what? I had a hell of a life. I enjoyed it. I did a lot of different things. I had a lot of different experiences. And like I said, it doesn't make you any better than anybody else, but it does make you different. Okay? How many different things would you like to do in your life? Okay? One of the things that if I had one wish, right, I would wish to be an immortal. Right? Why? Not to live forever, but in every lifetime I could be something else. In one, I can ride, I can be a race cars. In another one, I can be a cop. In another one, I can be a soldier. In another one, I can be a stockbroker. In another one, I can be a doctor. Right? In another one, I can own my own business. They're all exciting okay, in their own right. So what do you want to do with your life? Where do you want to go? Okay? Because it all comes back to what? The big what? The big choice. Say, what do you do with it? Okay? And I would encourage you, I would encourage you to give some thought to it. Most people don't. They just kind of get in a herd and follow the herd. And they go wherever the people go in front of them. They never get out and experience what life has to offer. And it's exciting. I'm 70 years old, right? <clears throat> I still have one of my goals is to be a game warden in Africa even at seven years old. There's some, a bunch of other things that I want to do. Okay? Whether I get them all done, I don't know. But there's a lot of things that I still want to 
to do at this age. And you're just starting out. So life has a lot of stuff to offer you. And it all comes back, guys, right, to what are you learning to do? You're in one of the best sports there is, right? Because a lot of what you do is up to who? Yourself. The reason that I love wrestling, right, probably more than I like football, but the reason I like wrestling is because my success depended upon what I did. See? It didn't depend upon 10 other guys <clears throat> on the team. When I walked out of the center of the mat, you get what you deserve most of the time. So that, that's the beauty of what it has. And as you go through life, all these choices are going to come back to you guys. You have to decide what you want to do. So start thinking about your goals and what you want to do with them. Alright? So, how much time do we have? You guys have any questions? I have gone over a whole lot of different stuff. Alright? The only thing that I would encourage you to do is I would encourage you to go back and figure out who you want to be and go back and write some goals down. Okay? You don't think it's a big deal, but I recruited a kid at Minnesota a few years ago. He came to one of our camps when he was 12 years old. 12 years old, we made him, we make everybody that comes to camp do a goal setting exercise. He came there, he ended up being a four time All American and two time NCAA finalist. My first meeting with him when he came as, as, a, as a freshman, they you know already had him. He had the list of goals he had written as a 12-year-old, six years old. And he, and he made a lot of those goals in that six years. So by writing things down on a piece of paper, it gives it positive reinforcement. It makes it real. You see it, and it reminds you of what you need to do. Okay. And it's all up to who? It's all up to you guys. You can have the most wonderful, exciting life there is. And it's freaking exciting, guys. Going out and chasing wild horses, that was fun. Jumping out of planes, that was fun. Learning how to fly planes, that was fun. Driving a drag strip at 130 miles, that's fun. Okay? There's a lot of fun things and exciting things to do in your life. You just got to decide if you want to. And I would encourage you to get off the couch. I would encourage you to put that phone down. And that's not reality. Reality is outside. I don't know why anybody would want to look and watch other people climb the mountain. I want to be the guy that climbed the mountain. I want to be the guy that jumped out of the plane. I want to experience those things. Because when you experience them, you feel good. You feel a sense of accomplishment that you can <clears throat> That you've done things. Okay? So, anybody have any questions for me at all? Yeah. When and where is your camp? When and where? Um, intensive camps are, uh, there's a 10 day one in, uh, in uh, there's a 10 day one in Iowa, there's a 14 day in Pennsylvania, there's a 28 day in Wisconsin, and there's a 14 day in Oregon. Okay? You guys talk about work ethic in camps, right? I started the intensive camp program in the United States, so everybody has an intensive camp followed off when I started in 1978. I have 2,516 days of intensive camp. Almost 10% of my life I spent in the dorm helping high school wrestlers. Okay? It's a different deal. Remember what we talked about? Work ethic? Anybody can do what I did. They're just now willing to spend 66 days every summer for 40 years in a row to do it. It's simple. Life is pretty simple, guys, to be successful that I found. It just requires effort. Okay? Most people want to be successful without it. It doesn't work that way. Not for the most people. Unless you're that guy that just went powerful for 425 million. But there's only one everybody can play. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody? Okay. Right? Yeah. Well.
Did I toast Ron Lesser? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. When I got him as a freshman, he was about your size. <laughs> and when he left, he was like, yeah, that's what you have to look forward to. Okay? You come to Minnesota, that's what you're going to end up looking like. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody? Okay. Right. That's good.